Risk Assessment What are the five categories of health and safety? Hazard Something with the potential to cause harm. 1. Physical Things which cause harm because of their physical characteristics for example electricity, work at height, radiation, vibration, noise, heat, trip hazards. 2. Chemical Things which can cause harm because of their chemical characteristics e.g. lead, mercury, sulfuric acid, cement dust etc. 3. Biological, living microorganism that cause disease and ill health for example hepatitis B virus, legionella bacteria. 4. Ergonomic, stress and strain put on the body through posture and movement for example frequent repetitive handling of small boxes. 5. Psychological, things that have the potential to cause injury to the mind rather than the body. For example exposure to highly traumatic event. Risk The likelihood that hazards will cause harm in combination with the severity of injury. Explain the aims and objectives of risk assessment. Objectives of risk assessment The aim of risk assessment is to ensure that hazards are eliminated of risk is minimized by the correct application of relevant standards. The objects of risk assessment are to prevent following thing. 1. Death and personal injury. 2. Other types of loss incident. 3. The occurrence of breaches of statute law which might lead to enforcement action slash prosecution. 4. The direct and indirect cost that follow on form accidents. Accident can be categorized into following types depending on outcomes. 1. Injury accident. 2. Damage only accident. 3. Near miss. 4. Dangerous occurrence. 5. Ill health incident. What techniques are used for identifying hazards? Hazards identification method. 1. Workplace inspection. 2. Task analysis. 3. Legislation. 4. Manufacturer's information. 5. Incident rate. Workplace inspection. A formal inspection can help to find out hazards that are present at site. Task analysis. This method help to identifying hazards before work start. There is useful acronym for tasks analysis. 1. Select the task. 2. Records the steps or stages of the task. 3. Evaluate the risks associated with each step. 4. Develop the safe working method. 5. Implement the safe working method. 5. Monitor to ensure it is effective. Legislation. Knowledge of the legal standards that apply to a particular workplace is an important. Manufacturer information. When new substance is purchased it comes with labels and MSDS that clearly identify hazards. Incident data. Internal accident and near miss data can be useful in identifying hazards. Hazards may generate risk to safety and risk to health. Safety hazards. 1. Slips, trips and falls. 2. Falls from height. 3. Falling objects. 4. Collision with objects. 5. Crush between objects. 6. Manual handling. 7. Contact with machinery. 8. Electricity. 9. Transport. 10. Contact with chemicals. 11. Fire and explosion. 12. Violence. State the five steps involved in risk assessment. Principles and practice of risk assessment. There are five steps to risk assessment. 1. Identify the hazards. 2. 
Identify the people who might be harmed and how. 3. Evaluate the risk and decide on precautions. 4. Records the significant findings and implement them. 5. Review and update as necessary. Identifying hazards. Hazards are the things with the potential to cause harm. It is important to identify both safety and health hazards. The hazards identification might be done by task analysis, manufacturer's information of inspection of workplace. Identify the people who might be harmed and how. 1. Employees 2. Maintenance staff 3. Cleaners 4. Contractors 5. Visitors 6. Public members discussed the principle of rating risk using a simple scoring system for likelihood and severity, evaluating the risk and deciding on precautions. Risk can be scored or rated using a simple formula risk equals likelihood x severity semi-quantitative risk rating system. Semi-quantitative risk rating system is useful for following reasons. 1. Clarity of thinking. 2. Consistency of approach. 3. Prioritization. 4. Time scale. 1. Clarity of thinking. People are more carefully think about likelihood and severity of injury. It is giving accurate result. 2. Consistency of approach. Different people can use this system and will get similar result. 3. Prioritization. It is possible to easily separate out the various risks presented by several hazards and rank them in order. 4. Time scale. It is even possible to allocate particular time scales to the risk rating that are calculated using this type of system. What is residual risk? Residual, acceptable, and tolerable risk. This risk that remains one these existing controls have been taken into account can be referred to as residual risk. Residual risk. If the residual risk is low then it might be considered acceptable risk. The existing control are adequate nothing more need be done. Tolerable. Tolerable implies that it is not acceptable but can be tolerated for a short time while interim control are put into place. Unacceptable implies that the risk level is too high for work to be allowed. What conditions might trigger a risk assessment review? Reviewing risk assessment. Assessments must be reviewed on significant change after an incident and perhaps periodically. There are a number of situations that might trigger a review of a risk assessment. 1. Significant change to a matter that the risk assessment relates to. Process substances equipment personnel legal standards workplace environment. 2. There is reason to suspect that the assessment is not valid. 1. Accident 2. Near miss 3. Ill health. Criteria for a suitable and sufficient assessment. A risk assessment should be suitable and sufficient. In particular it should. 1. Identify the significant risks arising out of work. 2. Enable the employer to identify and prioritize the measures that must be taken to protect people from harm. 3. The assessment should be balanced to the risks in the workplace. A low-risk workplace like retail shop. A high-risk workplace like chemical works. What particular staff groups require special consideration during risk assessment? Special cases and vulnerable workers. Sometimes it is necessary to focus risk assessment on a vulnerable person or group of workers such as young persons, expectant women and nursing mothers, disabled workers and lone workers. Young person A young person is defined by law under 18 year age. 
There are several reasons why a young person might be vulnerable to risk in workplace. Lack of experience. Physical and mental immaturity. Poor perception of risk. Heavily influenced by peer group pressure. Eager to show a willingness to work. Please give comment and suggestions. Thank you. Subscribe our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for more updates. Thank for visit our channel. See you next class. Thank you.